Hi, I'm Al Pinckney. Welcome back to White Fox Vintage Snowmobile. Uh, this will be part five of the W project. And in this part, we're, we've got the chassis back from uh, our good friends at LaQuay Welding. And uh, we'll take a look at what they did. We'll do a little bit of uh, drilling and tapping to accommodate the bumper supports and start prepping the chassis for some paint work. Um, as well you get a look at one of my motorcycles. A quick look at that. And uh, for those that maybe missed the intro, the W project is uh, something I've cooked up. It's, it's going to be a, a vintage snowmobile that will race on the ice up here in Saskatchewan on the ice oval. And uh, why it's called the W Project will be revealed later in the series, if you hang on. But uh, for those that are, ver are very observant, I am leaving uh, hints throughout the videos so that you may see what, what the W Project means. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, if it's boring, just fast forward through and, and go get a beer. But otherwise, I thank you for checking in. Here's just a shot of our 1984 Honda Nighthawk S. It's a little sport bike. Uh, 750 over, uh, dual overhead cam Honda engine, straight four. And uh, six speed transmission, which is kind of cool. And shaft drive, which is kind of cool. Nice little bike. But uh, our friends at LaQuay Welding finished up with our chassis and uh, love what, what Trevor and Wyatt did. So what they did was they cut the front I-beam or C-beam or C-channel, whatever you want to call it, right off the sled and put a new piece of 2 inch by 3 inch rectangular tubing a uh, quarter inch in depth. They inserted a, a new inner tube and that's welded in there complete with one inch brass bushings changeable and uh, drilled some nifty holes in the front for a little bit of weight reduction. Looks good. Also these are the spindles. These are Bombardier units and they have put a piece of round stock on there and drilled it out to 7 16 So we've got a nice heavy spindle. Virtually no play there. And we already have an uh, inch and a half to two inches of offset there to widen the sled without using a plate under the spindle, under the saddle of the ski. We also, well that won't stay in there, but we also have an offset Bombardier ski saddle which will give us another inch and a half. So it will be three inches offset, widen, widen the ski stance without any plates and so forth. So we're, I am very happy with what the guys did. Uh, the next step is to probably clean this chassis up really good and, and uh, strip the decal, what's left. The rear bumper either gets replaced or gets a lot of tender loving care. And uh, take the extra brackets off. Here the gas tank and the air box mounting bracket. And uh, I'll probably replace this eyelet here for the starter rope. It's just a, a wash. I think that would, well, that may, might do the trick. I think I've got some round ones, round stock, which won't wear the rope. And uh, give it a coat of paint. And uh, the, the steering stops. There's some little tabs that bolt on here have to be put on so we have a you know steering lock left and right a little bit of work to do on the on the uh, clutch cover and uh, Trevor hasn't presented me with a bill yet Trevor and Wyatt but we uh, 
we hope to continue to trade back and forth with the guys because we've got a good, really good relationship. So when we get time, we'll show you some updates on this chassis. We have drilled the chassis for the steering stops so we get lock to lock steering. Now it's a bit tricky because these brackets are meant to be underneath in the C channel that we had before but now that we're boxed in we'll mount them on top and they'll have to be shimmed up a little bit but I think they'll work alright. So our next step we have these brackets that give us the, the bumper support and the whole belly pan support and then a guide for the hood to go on and those holes will have to tap, drill and tap as well so we've jigged them up used our high-tech um, center punches transfer punches they're called and we've got some dents in there uh, I looked in the chart and the proper size drill bit for quarter 20 thread is a uh, number 7 or 1364 I believe and then we've got our number a quarter inch 20 thread per inch tap ready so we'll we'll drill these and uh, tap them out Give the tap a bit of a turn and just make sure we're square with the work piece. And this is the finished product. I just threw some common quarter inch bolts in there. I'll use the factory ones with the little 3 8 heads. They're a little bit, probably a better quality than those. So that's one side done, we'll do the other side. Our clutch guard on with the, with the factory C-channel here worked into a tab in the top of the clutch guard and then there were two pieces riveted either side so that it would snap down into place so and then you'd put your pin through. Uh, I, I riveted one of the pieces on the seat panel, Oops. but the other one won't go because of our steering stop. So we'll just go with the two for now. Uh, I've actually got another Polaris sled that I don't even have the pin through. I just have it sitting in that slot. It's never came come off in 12 to 14 years of hard drag racing, so this will be better yet. I'm designing, I'm designing this sled to be a, a super stock oval racer in, in Saskatchewan <coughs> with our existing rules. Uh, for super stock, the factory clutch guard is adequate. Now, if you jump to the mods, there's a question of whether a, a super stock sled has to have an improved clutch guard. Um, so. I've teched sleds that didn't have an improved clutch guard, so we've got to work on that rule this year. But I will make an improved clutch guard for this super stock sled. And what I'll do, I'll just reinforce the existing clutch guard. I did a, 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 a 250TX drag racer. It worked out real well. I might even take that clutch guard and put it on here because it's already built. And uh, put this one back. It's probably not a bad idea. But the next question is, should the inside of the clutches be enclosed? And that gets a bit difficult. 
So before I paint this chassis and so forth, I'm going to make a cardboard template of what an inner side clutch guard would look like uh, before I put things together so that I can fabricate that and put it, put it on really quickly. So I just want to, and we'll save this template, it'll be valuable for future use. And I don't have I don't have access to the engine that will go in this chassis right now, but I will have. So this area here is going to be a gray gray area, but this will be about right. So we'll just clamp that in place. So we'll just trace the, the hole for the bearing support and we'll sandwich the bearing support in there. So if the birds don't mind, we'll, we'll cut those holes out and then we'll know where to punch our holes at a later date. Close, very good. So upon further deliberation I checked the other sled out that has the good clutch guard and it'll fit. Now the other sled is a, a modified drag racer but that chassis is going to go back to a stock basis. So this clutch guard will work better on that sled and that clutch guard will work better on this sled so I'm just going to quickly drill these rivets out and take this off before we get to the paint stage and uh, have it flopping around. making an assumption that between 1978 which is the other chassis and 1979 Polaris wouldn't have changed their pattern on this stamping but who knows I know Bombardier would have use a little lubrication for sure. One of my unfavorite jobs of all times is trying to get the old deco material off. Some peel off quite nicely, some don't. I know Polaris did a good job here so we'll get the heat gun going and we'll uh, see if we can get it off. The adhesive um, we'll deal with later. That's the worst of the vinyl off. What's left is this sticky glue. Now if I was a wealthy man, I would send this in uh, to a, a professional outfit to have it beat blasted and powder coated. Uh, but I'm a do-it-yourselfer, so I'll continue on to clean this up and we'll get a coat of some kind of midnight blue on it.
As far as getting the glue off, I've tried methyl hydrate, alcohol, WD-40, spray 9, Goo Gone, and it all has some good effect, but what I finally went to is this product, CRC gla Gasket Clean. It's meant to take gaskets off cylinder blocks and stuff. Uh, it's a little bit nasty. It says protect painted surfaces. Well, I'm putting it on a painted surface, so we'll <clears throat> hope and pray, but it's, it says to spray it on, wait five minutes, and then wipe the gasket material off, and I'm hoping it gets the glue, so. It's been a little while since I used this, so we'll see what happens. Contents may uh, explode. Do not drink. Uh, I've got my safety glasses on. Wear a respirator. Well, we opened the door, so. Wait a couple minutes and see what happens. Yeah, it's very impressive. Glue is basically gone. So a second application may be necessary. So for the most part the glue is off. There is a slight film in places, so we ought to have to work on this a little more. And uh, I won't strip this chassis right down to bare aluminum. I will give it a light sand. Uh, gives good result. Now the tunnel protector strips are meant to keep the studs from spanking up and slashing your tunnel up. The TX comes with aluminum ones already installed and they are roughly a half an inch in depth. Now the stud allowance on the oval racer is three-eighths above the lug. That only leaves us an eighth of an inch, so I think I think that the studs would graze in there if the tunnel if the suspension if the track slapped. So we're gonna wanna upgrade these. And further to that, these strips are got the spacing for the cleated track which is uh, quite a bit less sorry about that less than the oval roughly eight inches on center and the rubber track should be closer to nine so these strips have to go and we will replace them with something uh, more like ha uh, three quarter, five eighths to three quarter. There, I got some old cat uh, high facts here that is more like five eighths. We might just sacrifice the Arctic cat part onto the Polaris and make that work. So uh, we'll drill these rivets out and do some surveying, some marking, and see what we come up with. So what we've done is we've drilled out the rivets the old rivet holes and taken the, the aluminum slide the tunnel protectors off and fart around figure out what we should do um, spaced drill redrilled the holes half an inch out which will give us a nine inch on center spacing to accommodate the rubber track and I've tried to put tunnel protectors on by myself before and I thought it would be a lot simpler to reuse these. They're rigid, they're already drilled in the right spots. 
but I will put a two quarter inch flat washers between this and the tunnel. I've got some long pop rivets and that'll give me lots of clearance. Now that just the rubber of the of the track will will collide with that instead of the studs. This this section here will hit if it if it has to hit. Hopefully it won't happen at all. So anyway, I've got two two in. It's a bit of a contortion to get the washer washers to be in place. But uh, my little wire helper helped me out. So we'll film the progress. So two quarter inch flat washers and a fairly long aluminum rivet. Now by putting the rivet in the hole and crawling underneath I can just pop the washers in place and they have been staying. And I'll continue with this on the other side. Won't bore you with the details. And if anybody out there knows what the hell I did with my brand new tube of Loctite that I just bought at the Napa store in town today, please let me know because I've spent an hour wandering around the sacred looking for it. it. Must have fallen out of the bag at the liquor store or something like that. So uh, anyway, we'll uh, put that part of the project on hold. Hit the bottom of the tunnel. These are designed to protect the tunnel. And there's the phone. <laughs> 